Hello everyone. Welcome to a new reading vlog for the week. Uh, it's Monday. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon, almost. Um, I've had a bit of a stressful start to the week. I just feel like I've started a bit on the back foot and I don't like it at all. So I've just taken a moment to kind of sit down, enjoy my cup of tea that I've had and try to, I guess, have a little reset and, and not let myself get caught up in that stress. I've already been at work this morning as well, so I guess that's kind of added to the stressful start, but we're home now, where we love to be. And I thought I would talk to you quickly about the books that I'm reading. Um, yes, books, plural. I'm reading three books right now, which I don't love. Um, not the books, the books are all great, I'm loving the books, but I just don't like the fact that there's three of them all at once. It is stressing me out. I'm not normally uh, one more than one book at a time gal, so I'm trying to just focus on one book at the moment and get that finished. And then two seems a lot more manageable. Maybe I can finish another one in the next few days and then it'll only be one. But yeah. Um, let's talk about them quickly. Okay, so the one that I'm trying to finish today is this book, Tangi, by Witi Ihimaida. Um, this is a novel written by a Māori author. So, that is great. This is the first novel to ever be published by a Māori author, and it was published in 1973. Uh, Witi Ihimaida is a very well-known Māori writer here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, yeah, I've been reading this with Kieran from Caddy Books. He has actually finished this now, so I'm playing catch-up. I've only got about 50 pages to go, so hopefully we'll finish that today. And then we're going to have like a Zoom chat about it so we can like get real down into the nitty gritty of it but yeah it's been really fun reading this with him um a quick overview of the story it is um i guess describing the relationship between a father and a son um told from the son's perspective after the father has passed away um, our main character's name is tama he is the eldest uh we of six children. His family um, live and work on a farm that they own in Waituhi, which is a small, small town in provincial uh, east coast of the North Island of Aotearoa. Tama, when he turns 18, decides to move away from home to Wellington to experience life. Um, it's what his friends are doing. He feels like he needs to do it too, so he does that. Uh, he spends four years in Wellington and when he's 22, one day he receives a phone call from his sister, one of his sisters, um, that their father has passed away and that Tama needs to come back home. So, we start the story of Tama's journey back to Waituhi from Wellington. Yeah, lots of familiar stuff in here for me and I'm really enjoying it so far. The second book is um, Mrs. March by Virginia Fato. I guess this is my attempt at like a spooky book for October. I'm not into spooky books. I've never, you know, Halloween isn't something that is celebrated really in New Zealand. Um, it's only something that I've really gotten into as an adult, but even then I'm kind of like, we don't decorate our house. Kids hardly ever come around to trick or treat. It's just not something that we do. So the idea of reading spooky books has never been something that I have gotten into, let alone do as a whole month thing. So yeah, this is kind of my attempt at that. Um, 
It's described as being uh, Shirley Jackson meets Otessa Moshvig, which I've never read Shirley Jackson, but I, I'm definitely getting Eileen from um, vibes from this book so far. I am about 100 pages in. Mrs. March is a very uh, anxious, nervous, and paranoid character. She is constantly thinking about what, or worried about what other people um, are thinking about her. Um, she's very unreliable as a narrator. Yeah, it's, ve it's very hard to know whether what is being described in this book is true, just because this woman is so paranoid. And there definitely feels like something is not being told. Um, we're missing something so far, and Mrs. March definitely got some secrets. Okay, the next book I'm reading is Trust by Domenico Starnone. He is apparently the husband of Elena Ferrante. Fran Ferrante. Um, translated from... Translated fiction from the Italian, translated by John Palahiri, who also translated his other book that I have, Ties. So, uh, this is my first time reading his writing, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I obviously have no idea about um, how she's translated it, but the writing is spectacular. Um, the story is about... It's being narrated by a male character named Pieto. He is a professor at a university and it's about um, his relationship, uh, relationships between or with two, two women. One at the beginning of the story is with a woman named uh, Teresa and she is, their relationship is very kind of um, explosive, so they have very huge feelings for each other, they love each other to the extreme, but then they're also very, on the other end, like, abusive towards each other, and one day in this relationship, Teresa convinces Pietro that they should each tell one another something, or the worst thing that either of them has ever done, that nobody else knows. Um, and so they do that, and then obviously each of them knows this big secret about one another. And a couple of days after that, they break up. And then Pieto meets a uh, another woman a short time after that named Nadia. Pieto and Nadia get married, and that's the point in the story that I'm at at the moment. Um, but... He's kind of haunted by this relationship with Teresa after he sees her. So his past relationship is really kind of threatening his current one. And that's what I'm reading right now. It was a really long introduction to this um, reading vlog. I'm sorry. I'm going to say something really fucking sad. Look at how sad these poppies look. Also, I only bought these yesterday. Um, and it just goes to show that I don't know shit about flowers because I saw them and thought that they were supposed to look like this and then got them home. Rupert was like, those flowers are dead. And I said, no, they're supposed to look like that. And he was like, no, they're supposed to be up. Like, see, I just bent that one. He was like, they're supposed to be up like that. And he's right, like... They're just so sad looking. It's one of those mornings where I just like want to stay in bed. But I'm up, I'm showered. Obviously still in my dressing gown, but we're making small moves. Um, I finished a book last night. I finished Tangi by Witi Ihimaira, which I I've been reading with Kieran from Katie Books. Um, 
yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was, it all came together in the end. Um, I don't know if it's a book that everyone will enjoy. I think a lot of, um, a lot of the reasons why I enjoyed it was because it had a lot of familiar aspects um, to my growing up and uh, the whole process or the whole yeah process of a tangihanga I'm very familiar with it obviously brought up um, a lot of feelings and emotions for me in regards to um, my own family and uh, the tangihanga that I've experienced so I know it's kind of hard for me to not let that affect my reading experience and I can't unknow what I know and I can't um, yeah I, I mean I tried to look at it as objectively as I could I think that uh, the writing wasn't absolutely amazing and the repetitive um, the repetition in the story did get quite exhausting but for me that kind of makes sense now that I've finished and towards the end the, the use of the repetition and the, re the going over and over and over of the grief of the main character in the situation uh, really felt like the process of going to a tangihanga and having these days of just honestly just sitting around waiting for people to arrive to pay their respects and it is a it's an emo emotional and exhausting process and but it can also be really um joyous and happy and it's a beautiful celebration of life and I think um a beautiful way to honor someone when they die um yeah it definitely makes me proud and happy to be Māori and that's the way that we choose to honour um, people that people that die and yeah I think I definitely think that I, I'm grateful for this book and that it exists and that I was able to read it but I, I know that it won't be something that everyone understands or enjoys um, same way that I did. I've also moved on to, well I started, picked up again, Trust by Domenico Sanone and it's so good, like we want to talk about good writing, it's really good, the translation is really good, um, yeah it's just a bit of a, it feels like a bit of a Like in the same way that a Mrs. March character in the Mrs. March book that I'm reading is paranoid, the man in this book is so paranoid and scared and afraid that this woman from his past is going to completely fuck up his life. And I'm kind of loving it. Like I'm kind of um, enjoying him being in this kind of internal turmoil because he's stuck in this place where he kind of wants to to reach out and have her in his life but he's worried about what that could do what 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 that could ignite him potentially like setting that in motion again he's scared and I like it um this is what happens when I read books about men or that have male characters uh, as protagonists or the main character. 
I always relish in their discomfort. It's just, it's just the way I am. Um, okay, I'm going to get up now. So we've got a work day to do. Morning! Uh, it's Wednesday. It's like 8.30 in the a.m. And I need to get out of this fucking house today. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit over lockdown at this point. Uh, I want to do something. I want to go somewhere. I want to put normal shoes on. Um, so I'm going to go for a walk today. I might walk to pick up some new flowers. And like get a coffee. And maybe take my camera and take some photos. I don't know. I just need to do that today. It's a beautiful day, but it is quite cold outside, so um Sorry, excuse my noisy chewing on my breakfast. Hope you have on my walk today. And I say we because I will be bringing you with me. Um, that'll put us in better mood. Because I need to feel better. This vlog has not been very good. Mmm. Um, I've been in a weird funky mood this week. My anxiety has been creeping up there the last couple of days. Uh, and I don't really know why. Maybe it's just being stuck at home. That, that lockdown feeling is starting to kind of get to me which is weird because I'm such a homebody and I love being at home but I'm really starting to get really like not just stir crazy but like I want to jump out of my skin type feeling um so I'm really just trying to do things this week like I'm aware of that of that feeling of feeling anxious and like I'm a, I've acknowledged that it exists and that it's there and then I can't quite figure out why but I'm just trying to do things to slightly alleviate it I haven't really been reading much but I'm about 40% of the way through Trust by Domenico Sanone I think I might finish this today. That might be the, the goal. Oh, yesterday, honestly, this is how well Rupert knows me sometimes. I, when we woke up, well, he got up early and I was still in bed. He looked at me and was like, you okay? You seem anxious. And I don't know what it is, but he can always tell. I don't know whether I look a certain way. I have a way my jaw is normally set but he was like you look anxious and I was like no I'm fine I definitely was not fine um and that like, he was messaging me throughout the day while he was at work which was really nice um I'm just gonna turn off this aircon because you can hear it um yeah and then yesterday I had a meeting at three o'clock and then he got home during that meeting and then I got off the call and I came out into the kitchen and he had these for me. The most beautiful flowers. 
Um, so that was super lovely. Good morning. I'm in a much better mood today. I am starving though. Um, it's Friday. That's an exciting thing. I'm actually really uh, excited about the fact that it's Saturday. Well, it's the weekend tomorrow. So, um, yeah, we're going to try and get out and about this weekend a little bit, I think. We're gonna watch the Downton Abbey because that's what we've been watching. Um, I started watching it years ago, not years ago, maybe like last year, and then we just never continued to watch it. So we'd run out of things to watch. So we decided to pick that back up. It's really just to bide time until the new succession um, season comes out, which I'm pretty sure is this weekend. Uh, so that's fantastic. Okay, bed is made. Um, I'm going to go and get dressed, have some breakfast, and I'm going to read my book. So I'll just come out here and finish this in my book. And sunny. It's probably going to go behind the clouds though. See my timer. Turned on the radiator until he does. You well, I don't know this young man aside from good morning and good night, but he strikes me as a very interesting addition to the family. Oh, here we go. Fish beggars. Why should he be normal as you? I'm in bed. I'm so happy about that. Um, I finished reading Trust by Domenico Starnone. And I enjoyed it. Uh, it changed perspective in the last 30% of the book. So the first part of the book was told from Pietro's uh, perspective. Although he was very unreliable as a narrator, I feel. Um, the second part was told from the perspective of his uh daughter once as a woman as a grown woman with children of her own um he is in his 70s and she must be in her 40s i would say i feel like the perspective that we get from her of of her father is how he he always wanted to kind of be viewed which is she's very uh, she respects him greatly. She thinks he's done fantastic things uh, in education and is deserving of this honour, this award that is being given. And she kind of pushes for that to happen. And then in the last part of the book, we hear from the perspective of Teresa, who it's very short, it's not that long at all, who has been asked to come to the ceremony where Pietro will be honoured as someone who has been taught by him to speak about how great of a teacher he is. Obviously she has this big secret that she knows about him and when he finds out that she's coming to speak 
about him, he is terrified. And the perspective that she gives is what I feel like is the most honest, but quite harsh. Like, she is very critical of him. So, yeah, it was kind of interesting. Um, I just, I think I thought it was just like, okay, I gave it a three star. I am quite interested to read um, more of his other work, though. I have ties sitting on my shelf, so I'll get to reading that. I also want to read tricks as well, so. Trust, tie, uh, ties, tricks, trust. Interesting collection of books there. Um, yeah. I'm going to read some pages of this. And then I'm going to go to sleep. And then it's going to be Saturday. And I'm so excited about that. You may be wondering why I look so good this morning. Um, <laughs> Rupert and I have decided to get the photography uh, backdrop that he we have out and play around a little bit this morning. He's just going to get some coffee. I'm just having my second cup of tea and my breakfast. Still quite early, but the light in our garden is so beautiful. So. We're going to play around with that um, this morning, which will be fun. I don't know why I choose to sit down and talk to you just as I'm about to shove my face. Rupert wants to shoot this um, signet that he bought, uh, he designed and made me for my 30th birthday. Can't wait for it to come back with a coffee. I don't really drink coffee, but um, I really want one today. pajamas on. I'm so tired. Going out, doing things is tiring. Hi, uh, this is me on a Sunday afternoon editing this vlog and realizing that I haven't signed it off. I didn't really film much today. Um, I haven't been doing much. Rip and I went <clears throat> to an open home just for fun uh, of an apartment just up the road. I finished Mrs. March. That was great. Uh, would describe it as a psychological thriller about a wife who so paranoid about her husband uh, that she kind of goes into a bit of a 
I want to say like hallucination. Um, she definitely starts imagining things that aren't there and um, she's a very unreliable narrator, that is for sure. But I really enjoyed it. I definitely got big Eileen vibes from it. Would not be surprised if it was heavily influenced by that. In fact, um, and I read a spooky book for October, so that's that as well. Um, I'm really bad at signing off these logs. But yeah, what started out as a really not great week ended in a really great week. <laughs> it's been a nice weekend to just relax and I got lots of reading done and we had a really nice day yesterday and I'm feeling like even if I have to go back to work this week it'll be all good. Uh, okay, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog this week. It's a little bit long. Um, but yeah, had a lot to say this week. Okay, bye bye.